April 7th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Joshua chapters 8 and 9 from the Old Testament. The Lord told Joshua, don't be afraid and don't panic. Take the whole army with you and march against A. See, I am handing over to you the king of A, along with his people, city, and land. Do to A and its king what you did to Jericho and its king, except you may plunder its goods and cattle. Set an ambush behind the city. Joshua and the whole army marched against A. Joshua selected 30,000 brave warriors and sent them out at night. He told them, Look, set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from the city. All of you be ready. I and all the troops who are with me will approach the city. When they come out to fight us, like before, we will retreat from them. They will attack us until we have lured them from the city, for they will say, They are retreating from us like before. We will retreat from them. Then you rise up from your hiding place and seize the city. The Lord your God will hand it over to you. When you capture the city, set it on fire. Do as the Lord says. See, I have given you orders. Joshua sent them away, and they went to their hiding places west of A, between Bethel and A. Joshua spent that night with the army. Bright and early the next morning, Joshua gathered the army, and he and the leaders of Israel marched at the head of it to A. All the troops that were with him marched up and drew near the city. They camped north of A on the other side of the valley. He took 5,000 men and sent an ambush west of the city between Bethel and A. The army was in position, the main army north of the city, and the rear guard west of the city. That night, Joshua went into the middle of the valley. When the king of Ai saw Israel, he and his whole army quickly got up the next day and went out to fight Israel at the meeting place near the Arabah, but he did not realize men were hiding behind the city. Joshua and all Israel pretended to be defeated by them, and they retreated along the way to the desert. All the reinforcements in A were ordered to chase them. They chased Joshua and were lured away from the city. No men were left in A or Bethel. They all went out after Israel. They left the city wide open and chased Israel. The Lord told Joshua, Hold out toward A the curved sword in your hand, for I am handing the city over to you. So Joshua held out toward A the curved sword in his hand. When he held out his hand, the men waiting in ambush rose up quickly from their place and attacked. They entered the city, captured it, and immediately set it on fire. When the men of A turned around, they saw the smoke from the city ascending into the sky and were so shocked they were unable to flee in any direction. In the meantime, the men who were retreating to the desert turned against their pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the men in ambush had captured the city and that the city was going up in smoke, they turned around and struck down the men of A. At the same time, the men who had taken the city came out to fight, and the men of A were trapped in the middle. The Israelites struck them down, leaving no survivors or refugees. But they captured the king of A alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of A who had chased them toward the desert, they all fell by the sword. All Israel returned to A and put the sword to it. Twelve thousand men and women died that day, including all the men of A. Joshua kept holding out his curved sword until Israel had annihilated all who lived in A. But Israel did plunder the cattle and the goods of the city in accordance with the Lord's orders to Joshua. Joshua burned A and made it a permanently uninhabited mound. It remains that way to this very day. He hung the king of A on a tree, leaving him exposed until evening. At sunset, Joshua ordered that his corpse be taken down from the tree. They threw it down at the entrance of the city gate and erected over it a large pile of stones. It remains to this very day. Then Joshua built an altar for the Lord God of Israel on Mount Ebal, just as Moses the Lord's servant had commanded the Israelites. As described in the Law Scroll of Moses, it was made with uncut stones, untouched by an iron tool. They offered burnt sacrifices on it and sacrificed tokens of peace. 
There, in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua inscribed on the stones a duplicate of the law written by Moses. All the people, rulers, leaders, and judges were standing on either side of the ark, in front of the Levitical priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. Both resident foreigners and native Israelites were there. Half the people stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and the other half in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the Lord's servant, had previously instructed to them to do for the formal blessing ceremony. Then Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, including the blessings and the curses, just as they were written in the law scroll. Joshua read aloud every commandment Moses had given before the whole assembly of Israel, including the women, children, and resident foreigners who lived among them. When the news reached all the kings on the west side of the Jordan, in the hill country, the lowlands, and all along the Mediterranean coast, as far as Lebanon, including the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, they formed an alliance to fight against Joshua and Israel. When the residents of Gibeon heard what Joshua did to Jericho and A, they did something clever. They collected some provisions and put worn-out sacks on their donkeys, along with worn-out wineskins that were ripped and patched. They had worn-out patched sandals on their feet and dressed in worn-out clothes, all their bread was dry and hard. They came to Joshua at the camp in Gilgal and said to him and the men of Israel, We have come from a distant land. Make a treaty with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, Perhaps you live near us, so how can we make a treaty with you? But they said to Joshua, We are willing to be your subjects. So Joshua said to them, Who are you and where do you come from? They told him, your subjects have come from a very distant land because of the reputation of the Lord your God, for we have heard the news about all he did in Egypt and all he did to the two Amorite kings on the other side of the Jordan, King Sion of Heshbon and King Og of Bashan in Ashtaroth. Our leaders and all who live in our land told us, take provisions for your journey and go meet them. Tell them we are willing to be your subjects, make a treaty with us. This bread of ours was warm when we packed it in our homes the day we started out to meet you, but now it is dry and hard. These wineskins we filled were brand new, but look how they have ripped. Our clothes and sandals have worn out because it has been a very long journey. The men examined some of their provisions, but they failed to ask the Lord's advice. Joshua made a peace treaty with them and agreed to let them live. The leaders of the community sealed it with an oath. Three days after they made the treaty with them, the Israelites found out they were from the local area and lived nearby. So the Israelites set out and on the third day arrived at their cities, Gibeon, Kephirah, Beeroth, and kiriath Jerim. The Israelites did not attack them because the leaders of the community had sworn an oath to them in the name of the Lord God of Israel. The whole community criticized the leaders, but all the leaders told the whole community, We swore an oath to them in the name of the Lord God of Israel, so now we can't hurt them. We must let them live so we can escape the curse attached to the oath we swore to them. The leaders then added, Let them live. So they became woodcutters and water carriers for the whole community as the leaders had decided. Joshua summoned the Gibeonites and said to them, why did you trick us by saying we live far away from you when you really live nearby? Now you are condemned to perpetual servitude as woodcutters and water carriers for the house of my God, they said to Joshua. It was carefully reported to your subjects how the Lord your God commanded Moses his servant to assign you the whole land and to destroy all who live in the land from before you. Because of you we were terrified we would lose our lives. So we did this thing. So now we are in your power. Do to us what you think is good and appropriate. Joshua did as they said. He kept the Israelites from killing them. And that day made them woodcutters and water carriers for the community and for the altar of the Lord at the divinely chosen site. They continue in that capacity to this very day.
God, what an amazing reminder that we should always be checking with you. You know, sometimes we think that we should only reach out to you in prayer and when the really big things happen, when our heart is broken. Uh, and sometimes when things happen, we remember to thank you for the blessings. But we should be in prayer of all things, never ceasing to be praying to you. And I think about that a lot with this story where I wonder what would have happened in the entire course of history, actually, if they had been obedient to you and checked in with you about doing something that you had already told them not to do. A couple of things you had already told them not to do. And I think about a situation that just happened uh, just a couple of days ago with me. Somebody, uh, another Christian, had, had owed me money um, for a very long time. And after a certain point, I just forgave the debt and forgot about it. Um, and I know that other people uh, were helping her work with that, that disobedience and um, processing money and being a good steward of God's money and everything like that. So it was really interesting. Uh, I was in church the other day and she came up to me and she says, I have a check for you. And, and I honestly said, for what? Because I had forgotten. And, and she says, for the amount I owe you. And it was amazing because the amount she owed me actually covered a uh, bill we had to pay for Daily Video Bible for almost the exact same amount plus the shipping charges to get the payment to where it needed to go um, and the processing part of that. It was amazing. Almost down to the penny, it was the exact same amount that we needed. And I just love watching God work that way. Not only that, you know, he's obviously working on her heart and, and teaching her how to be faithful to what it is he wants her to do. And, um, but how awesome, because she was obedient to God. Then the answer to my prayer uh, was answered as well, that we would get the money that we needed to pay that bill for Daily Video Bible. Um, and it's so incredible that if people do what God wants them to do, then everything for everybody else works out really well. It's amazing to think that our choice of sin, our choice of disobedience against you, God, could affect so many other people, and, and including the entire history of our future generations, just by the choices that we make now. And we see that in this story where the leaders were disobedient to you, didn't check in with you, didn't ask you what you thought of the situation, especially uh, since you'd already told them not to do what they were doing. So God, today I just pray that we will continually come to you and check and make sure that not only are we in your will uh, and doing what we're supposed to be doing, uh, which with living with the Holy Spirit inside of you, hopefully we're paying attention to that. But even on other things that, that seem to be inconsequential or small things, that we're obedient to you on how you want us to live our lives and what does that will look like even in some of those gray areas where we're not sure um, and we think, oh, I've got this. I've done this a million times. God, thank you for always being faithful and obedient to us. Help teach us how to be that way towards you. In your son's name I pray. Amen. <music>